Greetings and blessed to you once again, people of God, to the Revelator once again, and hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another potential ex exclusive presentation inside the Word of God and praying that the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ continues giving you the wings of protection the wings that cover you and embrace you and protect you and give you the divine hope in your times of hopelessness and today i've been assigned once again by the holy spirit to present yet another banger another mind-blowing presentation another deep exposure through the word of god and today i want to talk about obsession habit and addiction obsession habit and addiction and praying that the Holy Spirit once again is going to lead me throughout this whole presentation. And for me to be led throughout this presentation, let us go into the passage inside the Word of God in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1. And it reads, What, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by that baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we are also preserved by the glory of the Father. And we should walk in the newness of life. This scripture is referring to those that have already given their lives to Jesus, those that ought to walk in the newness of life, those that have already been given the grace to resurrect from all their manner of dead activities of life. And after being covered by the grace and the anointing, they are given also the potential and the opportunity to repent from their evil deeds. But again, the scripture then lectures those that are supposed to have given up their old former life 
but even after having come to Christ, they continue dwelling in the life of the past. They continue going back to the past. They continue living their life of filthiness from the past. They continue entertaining the flesh. And after entertaining the flesh, they use the word grace or the name grace as an excuse to continue further in their sinful activities. And Apostle Paul is asking, what then shall we say then? Shall we have to continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul has brought not only the gospel of salvation, but introduced the gospel of grace unto them. After having introduced the gospel of grace unto them, he then realizes that they don't want to do away with the life of sin. Though they have already accepted Christ, though they are now believers of Christ, though they are now partakers of divine activities inside the house of God, but they continue dwelling in some of the filthy activities which are in their flesh. And then Paul talks about being buried with Christ and then resurrecting with him in the newness of life as he lectures them about the importance the necessity of living a new life that is not infiltrated by sinful activities when one comes to Christ they believe that the salvation is overnight. When you bring a sinner from the world to Christ, they believe that the life of following Christ is like gambling. You shall immediately get your results overnight. They do not know that for Christ to fully walk with you, it is a journey. And that journey has got many ups and downs, but eventually when you grow in the things of God, there is no going down in the life of Christ. You go only upwards and you are maintained your altitude by the Holy Spirit. But these people that are being explained here, they were now trapped in different activities of sinful habits. Habits of sin that they could not do away with. And these were no longer just habits. Why? Because when a habit has entered you, you reach a point where you want to protect it you want to cover it you want to justify it and that habit develops into an obsession at this instant case i would like to use the example of one that has got a sexual obsession it is the only thing that will be running in his senses. Whenever he starts communicating with an opposite sex, he or she cannot start and end a dialogue without talking about sex. He or she cannot spend the whole day without indulging into activities that are immorally related to sexual 
activities it becomes an obsessive habit before it becomes an addiction and when it becomes an addiction you are no longer able to resist its demonic influence why because its demonic influence would have reached a level that is graduated under darkness you become a captive and when you become a captive you are no longer able to escape and when you are no longer able to escape you reach a level where you are now quoting scriptures that are going to tolerate you in that addictive sinful behavior habit or obsession that is where paul is then coming saying what shall we say then shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound why because they were caught up in different activities of sin which they were not able to do away with and now they were using the name of grace and even the name of jesus to hide behind their filthy activities of sin i'm talking about obsession habit and addiction for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection romans chapter 6 verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him and that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not save sin meaning that you reach a level where you save sin in the same way that you see those waiters and waitresses in a hotel saving people you reach a level where you become the waitress you reach a level where you become the waiter of sin you are saving sin where you save sin loyally and you cannot start the day or end the day without committing sin why because you are now carrying the body of sin for he that is dead is freed from sin you should die to this flesh die inside this flesh and be dead to sin and he that is dead is freed from sin now if we be dead with christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that christ being raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him for in that he died and he died unto sin once when he says he died unto sin once he's referring unto those that continue dwelling in the very same sinful activity and they cannot escape from that sin and while they fail to escape from that sin they also grieve in the presence of god and when they grieve in the presence of god they complain unto the lord why god is not answering their prayers yet they indulge in the very same filthy activities that cause their prayers to become in vain a habit is going to take hold of you a habit is going to control you in the same way that a remote control is controlling a device and when it reaches that level you know that it is no longer just a habit it is now an obsession it is now stuck inside your mind and if it reaches an addictive level where you cannot control it and then you start telling us about grace likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto god through jesus christ our lord therefore in romans chapter 6 verse 12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey its last do not allow sin to reign inside your mortal body this is the part that has defeated many christians allowing sin allowing lust to reign in your mortal body it means 
you are the compensating also you are contributing for the sin of lust to reign inside your mortal body i was talking to one of my disciples who's working out of town and she's working in an environment that is in the outskirts and she says where i'm working i share a room with a certain people that i share with but there is this other couple that i'm sharing with and the husband works in the same environment where she's working and she says every now and again i can hear them having sex and they don't even care that i'm in the next room this is a situation that has been planted by the devil to plant the spirit of lust inside this disciple why because she says every time when they start having sex she can hear them as if they are in the same room where she is so i was now explaining to her and i was saying do you know that you are also having sex this has become a threesome why because all those sexual sounds when they are happening and you're hearing them clearly you are being connected a portal is opening and you're being activated to become part of that sexual encounter and then she started confessing that i realized that every time when they have sex up until they finish i realized that i will also be totally wet you see you are now already activated and she says they repeated this and i was saying how many times have they done this how long has this been happening she said for two weeks for two weeks she has been having sex mentally not practically and this will become obsessive why because she will end up enjoying it she will end up being part of it she will end up wanting to hear more not because this is what she wanted i'm talking about obsession sexual sounds they have the potential to corrupt your mind the things that you read the books that you read novels they've got potential to lure your mind reading a script that is sexual those mills and boom novels watching a romantic series which is people that are kissing touching doing all sorts of nasty things it will corrupt you just a conversation that is sexual on whatsapp is capable of corrupting your mind if you are not strong in christ if you are not given the wheels of salvation that roll very fast if you are not given the strength and the divine ability to fight against sin you are going to get obsessed into a certain life of sin and when you get obsessed you want to continue repeating that activity you want to continue repeating it until it becomes a cycle and when it becomes a cycle you are no longer able to break out of it when you are no longer able to break out of it it means it has reached the level which is beyond just an obsession or a habit it is now an addiction when it reaches a level of an addiction you start telling me about grace what then shall we say shall we continue in sin so that grace can actually become relevant so that grace may abound and paul says neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto god there's a level when one yields his members as instruments of sin there's a level when one yields his members to work for the devil there's a level where one yields his body to become subjected under evil there's a level when one yields his own body to operate under sinful habits and addictions your body needs to be controlled by the holy spirit but when there is no holy spirit inside your body 
your body can be led or misled in different places places uh, that are going to destroy you mentally places that are going to destroy you spiritually there are people that are now living a spiritually dead life why because they've been trapped in sinful activities which they believe that they will never get rescued why because their addictions have reached critical points critical points where they no longer have hope they are now living in hopelessness they now believe that they will die in their sins that is the level of an addiction but that addiction did not start as an addiction it started as a mere habit and they were now obsessed and they failed to control it for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace what then shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace god forbid not know ye that he that yields his servants to obey his servants who are his servants his body to obey you obey and whoever you pledge your obedience unto whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness you become a slave in both kingdoms either of obedience or disobedience but god be thanked in the process why because you are servants of sin but now you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which has allowed you to get delivered being then made free from sin you became servants of righteousness meaning that there is a level where you become a servant of righteousness you are no longer allowed to do evil your body no, no longer allows you to sin you, you are now operating at a righteous level a righteous level where you can only do good a righteous level where you can never sin where even the natures of sin they can never be part of your body but i speak after the manner of men why because of the infirmities of your flesh because of the iniquities inside your flesh because of the uncleanliness inside your flesh why because you yield your members as servants of disobedience now that you are born again yield your members as servants to righteousness and to holiness for when you were servants of sin you were free from righteousness but the question now is what fruit did you have from those things which you are now ashamed of and now knowing that you have been made free from sin and became servants to god you have your fruit unto holiness and the end is everlasting life for the wages of sin are death but the gift of god is eternal life through our christ jesus christ let's go to the book of romans chapter 7 verse 15 for that which i do i allow not for what i will do that do i not but what i hate that do i there's a contradiction here between the spirit the body and the flesh the spirit is you the real you the body is what you you are carrying which is accommodating your spirit and the flesh are the ideologies of your mind there are three personalities there the body is a mere device that is being controlled by the remote control which is the flesh the mind of the flesh controls the body and these two they are battling against the other and the spirit is not in charge if then i do that which i would not it means the flesh is going against the will of the spirit and the body is not able to control itself then i consent unto the lord that 
Now then, it is no longer I that do that sin, but the sin that dwells in me. When it is no longer you that is committing that sin, but that sin that dwells in you. When it is no longer you that is committing that sexual immorality, but the immorality that dwells in you. It means your spirit no longer wants to sin. But knowing very well that your spirit no longer wants to sin, it means there is another government that is now in charge, which is no longer your spirit man. There is now another amendment a constitution of sin that is in charge of your body that is amended by the laws of the flesh the filthiness of the laws of the flesh inside your mind that govern the operations of the body and your spirit has become the convict it is captivated from doing that which is good and the scripture is saying it is no longer i that do that thing why because my desire is to do good but i find myself dwelling back into that life of sin that is a level of obsession where you go back to the very same thing that you don't like doing and you enjoy doing that thing but you don't like it for i know that in me which is in my flesh dwells no good thing when you reach that level you are now addicted for to do good the will is present with me but how to perform it is a problem why because i'm so obsessed to watching pornography i'm so obsessed to flirting i'm so obsessed to peeping at women while they are bathing i'm so obsessed to that filthy activity of sin i'm so there are so many obsessions and i'm speaking i'm speaking on your behalf i'm speaking on your behalf so that i can be able to relate with your situation i'm so obsessed to listening to people that are having sex i enjoy listening to those sounds i'm so obsessed to rubbing my clit and whenever i start doing it i cannot stop i'm so obsessed to listening to music that is talking about sex watching visuals of people that are acting immorally doing those nasty fantasies that move me to also end up being subjected to the activities of filthiness that they are doing for the good that i would do is not what i end up doing but the evil I would not is what I find myself doing. Romans chapter 7 verse 19. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law inside my members that when I do good, evil is present with me. A level when you now have received the word but there are some habits some obsessions that have remained inside your flesh child of god i've come back again before you and i want you to raise your hand i want to pray for you so that our lord jesus christ may spare you from this obsession this habit this addiction so that you'll be able to become a candidate of the next life and you'll not allow any sinful activity that will never be compensated by grace to swallow you into the realm of death i'm praying for you in the name of jesus be delivered be rescued from that sin that obsession that habit that addiction in the name of jesus